Abbiamo sentito che uh, di fatto il, come mercato se lo prendi bene, se lo valorizzi come si deve, se ascolti, è un mercato che offre delle opportunità, un mercato accessibile a fatto di fare le cose come si deve, mi sembra di eh, Esattamente. <ride> Quindi, eh, sì, decisamente. Per le decisamente sì. disposte a, a mettersi in gioco facendo quello che questo mercato chiede, hanno delle carte da giocare, hanno delle possibilità. No, vorrei, per, perdonami un'ultima un battuta Marco, non vorrei essere selettivo, apparire selettivo. Il mercato tedesco in un settore così particolare come questo, come anche nell'automotive, è per molti ma non per tutti. Sì. È per tutti quelli che hanno eh, la, 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 la capacità di mettersi in gioco, ecco, sì. seriamente. Sì. Non, 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 non osare provare così vediamo come va ma no no ah, cioè, ho, non giocare ma fare seriamente esatto esatto okay. va bene allora questo è il primo focus paese con un settore particolare abbiamo visto la componentistica abbiamo visto la subfornitura quindi degli aspetti particolari che meritano attenzione eh, e oggi li abbiamo affrontati con questo primo talk eh, con Fausto per quanto riguarda la parte dell'arredamento Fausto Massioni. Direi che a questo punto possiamo passare al secondo talk, quindi cambieremo mercato, cambieremo ambito sempre all'interno del, del settore dell'arredamento. Avremo modo ora di sentire dalla parola di Ugo Grasselli come funziona eh, il mercato dell'arredamento negli Stati Uniti d'America con un focus particolare sull'industria dei materassi e quindi lo vedremo con un outlook economico e prospettive da questo settore in particolare, ma magari avremo anche una infarinatura generale di quello che è questo mondo così interessante per le aziende del settore italiano. A te la parola Ugo, cosa ci puoi dire sull'argomento? Let me, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I will do my speech in English because I prepared my presentation in English, but then I will be able to answer you in, in Italian if you got any questions, of course. Um, okay, just give me some. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, I confirm. We can see you. Okay. It, uh, it's not full screen. What about okay. now? Okay. Yeah, that's now perfect. Okay, my name is uh, Hugo Liam Pearson Grasselli and I'm foreign market analyst and export manager for Australia, Middle East and uh, US as what company. Um, today I'll show you some uh, statistic and some prospect on uh, the metro segment in uh, America. Uh, there is a, a reason why I choose the metro segment and not the furniture market in the all because um, as a foreign market analyst and export manager, I got an experience with my company and with my whole team. Uh, we partnered up with, Ameri with an American company, but I will tell you in, a, in one second. So let me start. Okay, the US furniture market, the focus on the metro segment. Um, I started with uh, giving you some idea of, 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 the, of the size of the market. Uh, we're talking about market uh, in 2022 of 12,000 million dollars uh, and the expectation of growth annually by the 2025 is a uh, 2.65%. Um, second, uh, second thing I want to tell you straight away is that, um, well, the sales uh, the four states are estimated to go up by 5% a year in the next four years. So as you can see, it's a growing on market. Um, I want to show you now the difference between the states because not, not all the American market is the same. We got 50 states and not all of them are the same. So we, you can see from the pictures on the, on the bottom left, California and the Florida, the East and the West Coast are totally different. And California and the Washington DC and New Jersey, where I'm from, uh, they're pretty much the same. Um, so for each American state, you got different, you got different economy. That's very important to say. So no, not all the market is the same and not all the economy is the same pro capita. And on the right side, you got uh, the 2020 export uh, countries top for furniture market in US. And as you can see, probably you know already, China is the first. And then there is Germany, so Fausto Germany, and uh, Italy. 
so China, Germany, Italy, top three countries for export in the furniture market for the US, very important. Bullet points, I wanna just tell you straight away, uh, market in billions, 13 billions dollar for the bed and mattresses market in 2022 this year, which is, which is a huge amount of money, huge. 13 billions of dollar only for mattresses. Okay, now I want to tell you the experience that I had and I'm still having with my team at SWOT Company, why I choose the mattresses uh, segment. Uh, at the beginning of 2021, I started a relationship with an American company called uh, Natural Home, the Futon Shop, and I put the sign on the left side. And I'm working at SWOT Company, but I'm actually an uh, export manager of Italian beds. After months of scouting and research on the American um, market, I found this company and we started a very good relationship. Uh, actually, the owner of Natural Home came to Italy in October and met us in Salerno. So the owner, the lady, Susan Diamond, she came to Italy, she came to Salerno, she visited us and uh, below that you got my pictures with my CEO, Alessio and, you know, Suzanne in the middle and the pictures with, uh, uh, with the other owner of the, of the company. And we went together to display one of our mattress collection, as you can see from the right slide, Sirena is an Italian bed collection at Las Vegas market. So this is actually this was actually one of the main achievements we had this year. We displayed one Italian mattress in Las Vegas market. Huge achievement. And from this experience was born this research. Uh, let me go uh, forward and let me tell you what about about a, a bed in a box. Uh, in America, we got 175 bed in a box company. It's something that we don't have in Italy. In Italy, um, companies deliver mattresses not in a box. They deliver mattresses flat, normally. In America, we deliver, com uh, we deliver mattresses in, in a box. And it's something that is growing um, as a tendency. Uh, we close, we vacuum sealed and close mattresses in a box, and then we deliver it with a, you know, a online businesses. In fact, the 38% or to go to the showroom and, you know, lay on the mattress, fill the mattresses, it's not happening anymore. It's not happening because the tendency says that the 38% of the companies says online which is a huge, um, huge thing. Uh, let me uh, tell you some uh, differences between the kind of mattresses uh, in US. We got the type of mattresses, the inner spring, foam, hybrid, and latex. And then we got the range from low price to the medium price. So this is actually how much an American spends on a mattress from the minimum to the medium high. Um, it's very interesting to see how expensive can be a hybrid mattress and how cheap can be a foam mattress. What is foam? Foam is a polyurethane, which is a synthetic, uh, it's a synthetic element and it's very bad for the environment, but we'll, we'll tell you later. It's very, very bad. And you know, this tendency is going towards uh, the latex and towards the hybrid mattresses. In fact, you can see also for the prices that they can be very, very expensive. Uh, what, what the world says, what, what is the world outlook? Well, the global mattress market size, it's about, 30.4 billion in 2020. And from the statistic of before, almost the half of the market belongs to the US because US got 13 billion, the world size is 30 billion. So almost half is belongs to the US market, which is huge. So the rest, uh, the, the rest of the 17% belong to the, to the rest of the countries. 
And this expectation is going to grow to 6.9% um, forecast period 2022-2027. Again, uh, the, um, the overlook and the, the growth coming uh, in this coming year, um, you got many factors. One of the factors is because why uh, the, this segment is growing? Because many, many more people are having sleep disorders and back pain. Why this? Because of the job, because of um, the quality of life, because of many issues they ha we have in society. So people sleep bad, people live bad, people buy good mattresses. Okay? One of the key trends in the market uh, uh, is the demand for customized mattresses. Uh, yeah, customized mattresses is a concept. We are experiencing this, com this concept right now, even with the company that we work with. Uh, what the customer want? The customer wants something uh, suitable for their own needs. They want something for them. They don't want a general mattresses. U.S. clients don't want general mattresses; they want something for them. So this is why this is why the company uh, they have customized products. They are able now to make mattresses with different elements. And also, as you can see, I wrote down uh, that the hospitality sector, hotels, resorts, luxury spas require mattresses to serve customers. So that means that you know because the luxury um, segment is very high and Americans, you know, qual the quality of life of, Amer of American is very high. They have demands. So companies adapt themselves to have customized product. And this is a fact, uh, in, a sp in the spring mattresses dominate the, the US market. In the spring mattresses are the mattresses oh, so far uh, most sold uh, best sellers uh, with a more uh, with a best satisfaction uh, feeling for the customers. But the tendency is say something is say something slightly different, and I will show you now in the next slide. Exactly this. Um, the tendency say that the organic, the natural mattresses, is favorable for the market. It means that uh, not all the market is the same and not all the clients want the same product. Latex, in this case, with uh, cotton, with wool, is, is a product that people demand and people want it. Um, and this is about give a product uh, sustainable, green, um, re that respect the environment. Then I found out this a uh, very interesting connection between the mattress market and, like, and the construction area, the construction link. Um, the US market uh, size is set to expand to 16,000 million in 2020 and reaching the, by 2030 the 26,000 million dollar, which is a gain of 44.8% between 2020 and 2030. Uh, I found out in this research that um, the mattress market grow where the constructions grow. So more houses are built, the better is the market for the mattresses. Then um, I came up uh, to this uh, very interesting um, kind of uh, examples of why um, the companies now are choosing to be online. First of all, uh, companies go online be because they want to reduce the costs. They want to reduce the expenses and the fees for the, the rent, for the people, you know, for the employees. Uh, so companies are going online and being online for the companies means for us, for, for us that we are customer, we, we, we have to give them all the specification for them to tell us what is the best mattress. And on the top right, you can see a kind of, um, a kind of questionnaire 
where it's an American company that says, tell me, you customer, tell me what is the feeling that you want? What is the support? What is the temperature regulation? And what is, what is this electricity? In this way, the American company can intercept you as a client and you don't have to go to the store anymore. You don't have to spend money in petrol and you know travel um, through the city and, and go and, and see the mattresses. Because with this questionnaire, the companies can already tell you what is, your, what is the best solution you need. And this is very interesting. Then at the bottom of the page, um, I said something about the COVID uh, because of course COVID impacted negatively um, on the market. Um, but uh, somehow, uh, because people stay in the home, people um, felt home and uh, they, um, they had kind of a more attention. They had a feeling to renovate it and to choose best product for their houses. So COVID, yes, had a, a very negative impact, but at the same time, level up because people stay indoors, so they choose, and they're still choosing the best uh, kind of furniture and kind of mattresses for themselves. Uh, again, uh, by 2020, 2020, 2030, there is gonna be a growth of 22.5 billion in the industry. Uh, this is because we, the American government now opened it up um, kind of uh you know the borders uh tourists start and the tourism start you know start to going back and um start to, to grow as well and we are expecting also the construction sector to to invest and this is why there is a very good expectation for the market so uh if i was an advisor for uh other companies i would say to the uh, businessmen you should you should invest in America if you have an, an Italian, the made in Italy uh, product uh, in the mattress field. And um, yeah, I will show you now um, in, this, in, in, in this slide, uh, why, why is this? Because the major trend is exactly to, um, it's exactly this, to, to give uh, the customers something unique for them. And this is going back to the online retailers. Many, many, many companies are closing down their stores, they're closing down their showrooms and going online. And this is actually a, a winning operation. This is a winning, uh, a winning fact. Uh, we need to abandon, in my opinion, we need to abandon the, you know, the old view to go back, to go to the store, to go back inside the stores and lay down and feed the matches because uh, right now what we have on, in the market is a very uh, good technology and, and good questionnaires um, for the clients to tell them, to tell the companies what kind of product they want. And now I, I want to go back to fa what Fausto told us before about sustainability, uh, because sustainability uh, and you know being uh, respectful for the environment is one of the pillar uh, for the for the for this for this time you know for the nowadays. And um, I, I want to leave you with a, I want to leave you guys with a, with a question. So, or are mattresses environmentally friendly? And uh, I would say uh, I would say. Yes, but I also would say we need to we need to understand that uh, the world is going in a direction in a direction where the synthetic, the polyurethane, the foam is is something that it can't be recycled that much anymore. So we we need to move uh, to a direction where the green, where the organic, where the um, you know where the latex and uh, where the hybrid mattresses are more um, valued. This is why I put on, on, on this slide that the 80% of the mattresses can be recycled, can be. So it's a yes, but at the same time, we need to be aware that um, the, 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 um, the components inside the mattresses are very important for the, for, for the nature, for the environment. So we need to, keep going this direction and not going back to the 
to the to the old days um, with the old systems. And on the left of the, the left side of the slide, I put uh, a, a, um, a statistic about the U.S. organic bedding markets uh, 2015, 2025, and is expecting to grow. And yes, um, uh, I, I want to just thank you guys for having me here and for this opportunity to talk with you and to share my research. I hope, you know, I've been helpful and, you know, I'm open to answer any questions if you got any questions. And you can see my contact over there. And, um, well, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Hugo, and Parson Magaselli. We will see later the question for about your presentation about the mattress segment and uh, how we can suppose to export these goods in the United States or similar products uh, about design in the United States. I think uh, we can pass over with uh, uh, Giovanni Pecorari. Uh, thank you before Fausto Massioni and uh, Hugo Graselli for their speech. And uh, let's see with uh, Giovanni Pecorari, uh, what was the answer to the questions we made and uh, see what's the view of the market from our audience. Uh, Giovanni Pecorari, cosa ci dice del questionario? Cosa ci dice il nostro, il nostro pubblico? E così possiamo dare un'occhiata a quello che è la percezione di questi due mercati da parte della nostra audience. Uh, sì, grazie, grazie Marco, grazie a Fausto e a Hugo. Sì, passiamo in italiano, il resto del, del talk di oggi sarà in italiano. Qualcuno ha già scritto commenti in inglese e anche domande in inglese, però Hugo è, è, insomma, risponderà in italiano. E quindi diciamo il, poi se qualcuno invece ci tiene a, a scrivere a parlare in inglese ovviamente lo possiamo fare però il fatto la, oggi l'attività di moderazione da parte mia e di Marco sarà fatta in italiano allora passiamo appunto al, a dare un'occhiata del sondaggio no? eh, 